Welcome back. Part number three, how to sustainably build a business in professional speaking. Hello and welcome back, Chris Davidson. Thank you, Niels. So now we talked about opacity in part one. We talked about system engagement in part two. And then you said the third, the third stage is community engagement. Not only does that sound like a lot of work, it also sounds quite complicated because we all know these moments. You, you set up some social media piece and you think, I'm going to build my community. It's all going to be well. And then you realize that after one year, you have uh, 110 people, basically family and friends who just uh, out of politeness, click on like when you post something. So that is, of course, not what people want. What do you mean with community engagement? Okay, well, it's a great question. And there is a, there is a blurring between system engagement and community engagement. There's, mm -hmm. there's not a hard, harsh line. It's pretty clear when you get out of opacity and into system engagement, that's a fairly clear step. But from yeah. system engagement to community engagement is, is kind of a, just a smoothing from one to the other, really. It's, it's not mm -hmm. a definitive and necessary, necessarily clearly defined step. But what do I mean by it? What I mean by it is that you have the systems in place, so tick that box. We don't need to look at them anymore. But you mm -hmm. go beyond having the systems and you make a conscious decision to add enormous value to a specific community of people. Mm -hmm. Now, and I completely get your view of, you know, a year later, you've got 110 people, exactly. or, you know, family and friends. I, I get that. Yeah. I get that. And, and you know, we, we, we've kind of all been there to some degree or mm -hmm. another. But the challenge that I would put down when uh, – when one finds oneself in that position, the challenge I would put down is just to say, well, it only means one of two things. Number one, you're not focusing on your community enough. Number two, your content isn't good enough. It's just one of those two. You can pick whichever one you like, but it isn't anything else. Don't try and convince me there's a third reason because there isn't. Mm, so how do I find out when my, so first of course, how do I find out which one is it? And especially when it's about my content isn't good enough, that is of course something which for most people is, well, hard to agree on, but also hard to find out. Hmm. Do you know, I'm not sure that it is because I think that, I think that the more you ask, the more you get, the more mm. you'll be told. So, mm. If I look at um, people who, for me, have uh, great community engagement, uh, and I and I realise that not all of your uh, not all of your listeners, by any stretch of the imagination, will know the person I'm about to quote, but but uh, she can be relatively readily found on Facebook, is a, a lady called Jane Ardern. She's a member of the Professional Speaking Association in the United Kingdom, and mm -hmm. she's a dog trainer. She's a, a dog trainer and a dog breeder. One of the many. Yeah, Let's face it, that is a very competitive market. When you offer dog training, there are basically hundreds in every city, aren't there? There are. Now, Jane, there aren't, though, hundreds who have won um, the honors that Jane has won in, mm -hmm. in major dog events like Crufts and what have you. There aren't those that have the qualifications that she has, a degree in canine behavior, etc. So, And there aren't those that have written the books that she has written, et cetera. Mm -hmm. so, so she has, by virtue of the quality of her work and just sticking at the quality of her work, she has built up an enormous following on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And all Jane has to do, frankly, I mean, she spends almost, Facebook must be really upset with her because I don't think she spends any money on, on advertising. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point where you most know, people will say, I want to do the same. I want to have engagement and don't have to put money down. Is she, she, you know, she throws a post up, she throws a post up on, on to, into her Facebook page. And I, I mean, I'm just looking at one here. It's got nearly 800 engagements and reached over 7,000 people. She's not spent a penny on it. That's what most people want. Now, and now, now Jane, Jane does that because uh, she does it through the following. 
she engages as a human being. This is, and this for me is the big difference if we go back to system engagement. When I was talking about system engagement uh, and in the previous program, you recall I was saying that really visitors to the site didn't know who I was. They, they, yes. they came along, they, oh yes, you know, shall I do business with Chris Art? Don't know who he is. And so community engagement though, is, is that when people get to know you as a human being. And Jane does an excellent job of demonstrating to her community that she is a real human being. So she puts up videos of her dogs misbehaving and not doing the right things when she's making videos of them and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. she, she, she talks about when things go wrong and all of this stuff because we all know that's what happens. Mm -hmm. So although she is extraordinarily good and the, uh, at the top of her, uh, her particular tree and, and lots of dog owners will be going, Oh my goodness gracious. I wish my dogs were as obedient as Jane's and what have you. They get to know her as a human being and that for community engagement, that is absolutely crucially important. So mm -hmm. that's one particular aspect of community engagement that I think is important. Now coming back to the, coming back to the um to the to the materials so ask and you shall receive so i think if you keep um asking mm -hmm. on uh on through social media you can also uh run a number of uh, surveys um formally and informally we'll we'll maybe say a couple of points on that in just a moment um but keep keep testing the market and keep responding to what people want and then put up information on the website that just gives people the opportunity to sample information. So when I started, uh, when I did this on the Active Presence website, I developed two sorts of download materials. I developed expert guides and I developed smart sheets. Mm -hmm. And a smart sheet was one piece of paper. It was a, it was a, a two-sided PDF, and a smart sheet could be downloaded by uh, by anybody without without any sign up. And I had a library of them, and they were all nicely drawn up and nicely designed. And you could just go in and take as many as you like. I didn't mind. Um, the expert guides were ten, twelve pages, mm -hmm. and they were behind a sign-up wall. So okay. people, people would look at these smart sheets and say, well, actually, this is quite useful. If mm -hmm. this is quite useful, then the chances are his expert guides are, are okay. I'll sign up. I'll give them an email address for an expert guide. One other point, the smart sheets, because the smart sheets were not hidden behind a sign-up wall, because they were in the general part of the website, of course, they're indexed by Google. Yes. So you've got a lot of words there, a lot of, a lot of tight, tightly written, good copy that, of course, is great for building the authority of the site. That gets you higher up the rankings. That brings more visitors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so yeah. it carries on. But community engagement is all about is all about asking. And so probably just a, a final point to finish off in terms of asking don't forget that with um, SurveyMonkey, you can go and survey your marketplace. You can buy an audience from SurveyMonkey. So, so if that you means I, I can say I want to have um, 100 um, decision makers from the United States in the age between 45 and 55, uh, male, female, 50% 50, 50 split. Yes. Oh, Okay. Sounds expensive. Uh, I, I, you, you, you can. I would suggest. I would suggest that you probably want a bigger sample size than that. A hundred isn't yeah, much. Of so yeah. yeah. So, but, but uh, in principle, in terms of in terms of what you've just said as an example, yes, you absolutely can. And then you can put Is yourself. It expensive. Out. That's of course uh, an no, not particularly so. No, I, I, I did it. I did it when I uh, when I was looking for a. I did it on a, a a book I wrote a few years ago when I wanted to test the cover of the book and the title of the book. And mm -hmm. so I, I, I asked, um, I specified the target market to SurveyMonkey. I loaded up different uh, covers. I loaded up different uh, titles. And I, and I asked my target audience, what should I call this book and what cover should it have? And then I just did exactly what they told me to do. 
And that, of course, is a better way than, I mean, we, we all know from our industry that no, normally people do market research by posting into their own Facebook group, which cover do you prefer, which, of course, has nothing to do with proper research. Uh, well, it, it, well it's, it's not research at all. What, what it's yeah. actually doing is just saying, look at me, aren't I clever? I've written another book. Well, gee whiz, wow. You know. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, that's the way I have to put it. I am German. I, I, I like that straightforward way. Exactly. So Excellent. I, yeah. So I think that's, that's really, I think that wraps up community engagement, really. It's just, you know, you get the systems in place. Having got the systems in place, you don't need to pay attention to them anymore because they're working. So now, having got the systems in place, you can go to your community and let them see who you are as a human being and, and just start engaging with them. And you are right. It, it is, it's hard work. It's difficult and all the rest of it. Um, and the critical point is to get to the point where people will comment on your posts and share your posts. Mm -hmm. That's, that's the critical aspect of yeah. it. Excellent. So that's community engagement for today. I'm going to put Chris contact data into the show notes of this podcast. If you have any additional aspects you like to talk about with Chris, and then we're going to see, uh, we're going to see each other soon again for part four, where we're going to talk about market alignment. So Chris for today, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.